Hey everyone, here's a beginner's guide to Civilization VI. This is going to be kept fairly simple. I'm not going to go more than sort of 30 minutes, if that, on it. Um, what I want to do is introduce you to some of the key concepts about the game uh, and try and do it in as simple a way as I can and try and start the game simply so you can kind of understand the core dynamics. Now there is a tutorial that you can go through in the game and I suggest that you, that you do go through this. It's worthwhile. It teaches you a lot of concepts on the game. But it's a big complicated game there are many ways to win it there are many things that you can explore and expand upon but it is very overwhelming at times so the tutorial covers a lot of concepts that will probably scare the heck out of you so by all means go through it um, but I'm going to try and give you a faster sort of simple guide to Civilization 6 and get you started I'm playing on the Xbox Series X so this is going to be relevant to there but I'll try and keep things open so it makes sense for other platforms as well um, so the first thing I want to point out before we start is the game options. So um, in here you can cycle between uh, game, audio and interface with LB and RB. On the PlayStation that would be L1 and R1. PC, sorry I don't know, but it should show to the tabs on the top. You see it says LB, RB to the side of them. Anyway, under game uh, there's these options, quick combat and quick movement. And if you find as you're playing the game that the movement is annoying, it takes too long, you can turn these to enabled and they're going to make the units just move instantly so it makes things that a little bit quicker you can also have auto end turns so you don't have to end your turn each time um, you can also turn the advisor on or off so i'll leave them on because they'll waffle away and you can see how you know what what they suggest as we go through but um uh that well, we'll see how we go with that i find that annoying or not the other thing i want to point out is the audio i find the music very annoying in civ so i turn it off um, you can see my music is set down there i'll give you a quick touch hate it so i turned it off um so you've got the interface as well um there's the intro video was the thing i wanted to point out if you don't want that launching each time you can turn that off here you can also turn off subtitles if you find those annoying um so that's something you can do and you've got various other things here like the auto unit cycling and all sorts of stuff like this but nothing too exciting there if you mess it up down the bottom you see it says restore defaults or you can just confirm with the menu button or whatever it is shows down there on your platform right so let's jump into single player um, we're going to create a game uh, there are scenarios that you can play with. I do not suggest these if you've never played Civ before, so I would go with this one. So we're going to create a game. So for a beginner, you then sh sort of shove this lot in your face. You're like, what the heck is all of this? Okay, so there are different expansions which you may or may not have purchased with the game. I suggest if you're a beginner, you start with standard rules. This is the simplest version of the game. The next thing is it says, do you want to be a random leader or do you want to choose your civilization? Now, this depends on your objective. However, for your first game, I suggest you start working on uh, looking for a domination victory, which is where you use military units and just try and bash the heck out of your rivals. So you can see here, the one I would suggest for you is Alexander for this. So you can see it says cities do not incur war weariness. The game by standard really punishes you for being aggressive to other civilizations and I find it quite annoying. So Alexander has an advantage that as you are at war with other enemies, your cities don't suffer war weariness. So it's a little easier to achieve a domination victory with him. There are other uh, people here that you can go with that are gonna be better at other things. So you can see um there's uh, all these different ones here so there's some other more minded ones like this dude um from persia um so you can have a little look through them but i think just just for ease um alexander is a good pick so i would go with that one so with, when you're happy with that you just choose a and it goes from random to alexander okay so that's all good you can see these other ones here we've got random leaders from pool one or pool two um so we can pick those um later if we want sorry uh the they're, they're going to be picked for us. Um, so you then got the game difficulty. So you've got Prince, Warlord, Chieftain. I don't know why. When I go here and I press left, it jumps back to the previous area here. Um, but Settler is the simplest. Deity is the top. So I would suggest if it's your first game, you go with Settler or Chieftain or maybe Warlord if you're feeling brave. But one of those. Game speed. Um, Civ can take absolutely hours or days to complete a game. So depending on how much, how long you want to take on it um, that's up to you but quick i would suggest uh, particularly for the first game just to whip through things and get through to the various eras uh, and you know learn how the game works so we'll go with quick here map type there are different ones there are continents uh, or these different sort of shapes of land you can have an earth type one east asia whatever it's up to you it doesn't really matter which one you pick um 
you know, the, the, the more continents you have, the more it's going to take to explore and, and get out there. So continents is the standard one. Then you have the map size. You can have dual if you just want two of you or tiny for a, a few civilizations or bigger or bigger. Of course, the bigger this is, the longer it's going to take you to explore and, uh, you know, to find your civilizations that you're against. Uh, and take them over so up to you there and then you have these different modes so there's different game modes here barbarian heroes and legends monopolies zombie defense mode um, tech and civic shuffle mode um, so it's up to you whether you want any of these on i would suggest you keep them off for your first game now before we start the other thing i want to start look at is advanced setup and there's a reason for this so on the bottom left you can see it says advanced setup just need to drink water sorry so if we go into here, um, there, there's some things here I want to point out. City-states are um, kind of like, they're not civilizations, they tend to be a single city. Um, and they don't really do much against you, but they confuse things because there's units exploring around, they've got their own sort of little army. I don't think they attack you as standard, um, but they are confusing. So I would just turn them off, so you can turn these down to nothing. Um, you can also jump into some of these, so we could change, say actually we want a tiny... Um, and some of these you'll see will override stuff, so um, you just want to go through these and just turn them them off, I would. Victory conditions. I suggest you turn off culture, religious, science, and possibly even score. Um, because if you settle on one objective, it makes, you know, kind of your direction in, that game, in the game a little bit easier. So... Um, Domination is basically where you take over the other civilizations. You either destroy them entirely or just take over their cities and, and move them into your civilization. So you can add these other ones on if you wish, but I think domination is a classic sort of sieve mode. And I also think it's a lot of fun. So I would say just have domination on. Um, but I should explain these quickly, I suppose. Um, other ways you can win your culture as you put sort of more interesting things in your cities um, and sort of... Uh, regions around it um, you could increase your culture output of a city and the bigger that gets the more likely other civilizations are to sort of convert to your leadership same thing goes for religion uh, you can find religions and then send off you know uh, religious people off to other cities and try and spread religion and then if you do that enough they may come over to your civilization science is pushing the uh, research side of things so the more you pump into research uh, the more the likelihood is you could win by science and score is overall score so you get scores for doing all of these and um, you know the best score can win so um, you can turn that one on on as well um, but if you have this one on then some of the points earned on these may mean that you get beaten here so just up to you there so game options you can see there's some things here another one i want to point out is tribal uh, uh, tribal villages is okay but barbarians are annoying as heck particularly to a beginner um, of the game um, so you can turn these off what this means is you won't get horrible aggressive little random sort of units appear and start attacking your cities and this is a very annoying early game so i would say turn that off um, so if you hover over it and just press your a button or whatever it is that, that you select with on your platform i think that would be x on the uh, playstation um, and then that's going to stop those appearing uh, and then we've got these different game modes which we're not bothered about you can also pick your other players here if you want so we could say we also want to have oh no not that one hang on sorry Ah, we go right trigger here. So at the minute, we're going to have four civilizations. At the minute, they're random. Uh, you could go through and pick particular ones if you want. But if we leave them as random, we'll just have random ones appear in the game. And then when you're ready, you hit start game. So this will then load the game for you. It'll take a little bit of time. From the first stirrings of life beneath water, to the great beasts of the Stone Age, to man taking his first upright steps, you have come far. Now begins your greatest quest, from this early cradle of civilization on towards the stars. Great warlord Alexander, beneath your sword shall Macedonia spread throughout the world. Yeah, yeah. So, now we're in the game and you can see the advisor has popped up and they, they give you a lot of useful help. So it says LBRB to open the left and right trays to toggle the, wor and to toggle the world tracker. So we go, okay. Yeah. Yeah, you're going to bring me all this stuff, aren't you? Thank you. <laughs> so they're useful as a beginner. So um, if you want that stuff on, 
great. You can see I can, the, you know, some of these things here, left button, right button is accessing all of these things. But basically what we've got here, I've hit B, so I've got my little units. I've got right, my right stick is up and down. Right trigger is zoom in, left trigger is zoom out. So that's uh, right to R2 and L2 on the PlayStation. Not sure on the PC, sorry. Um, but we've got our little dude here, a little settler and a little set of warriors here. So if you move over to either of these and press A or X on the PlayStation, it'll tell you a bit about them. So you can see this is saying um, where are good areas to settle um, for this settler. So anything where, where you see a city uh, sort of area is suggesting that's a good area to find somewhere. Um, so uh, anything with a green on here is saying that there's it's good for housing there's water availability guide there um so it's saying water's available um and a red would be a bad area so somewhere here is bad here is bad as well um we've also got things here where we could sort of go nearer the coast possibly so just before we move that one we can go over to this one so i hit i hit b which is circle on the playstation um for my warrior just to explore a little bit more so we can have a little look around and see what else is about here so we'll just sort of move this one here um, and the sooner you can find an area the better uh, so if we just get rid of that we can see around here there's some good resources we've got um what's that look like what is that coffee or something we've got stone we've got some deer um so you could say that that actually looks like quite an interesting area already um but it suggests that um you know some of these other areas are better suited so we'll just have a little look what we've got not quite sure why that one's better than that one you know, where we are looks all right to me um ideally you want to have a river by where you are so what we'll do we'll just explore a little bit and just see whether we've we've got a better area anywhere yeah yeah um our explorers have spotted another friendly tribal village I suggest we send a scout to investigate. Brilliant, but I haven't got a scout, you stupid woman. <laughs> uh, so we've got the, the settler here has just come up this little bit further. So we've got something there, uh, which looks like a resource as well. And we've got a, a little settlement up there, but we haven't got a scout to, to sort of go with at the minute. But I'm gonna, mm, I would prefer a river, uh, but it doesn't look like there's any river around here to sort of explore not that it's it, it's critical um so we'll just see well what we'll do we'll just chuck the build in here just so we can say we've we've built a city so uh, down the bottom here i'm using the d-pad to go through these and this first one is to build a city so if i hit that do you want to found a city here or remove the woods on the tile cool uh and we founded our city here so I hit a to do that so um there's some interesting things here we've got this stone here we've got What's that like silver or I don't even know what that is uh, rocks and stuff we've got some a few bits here and then down the bottom right it'll show uh, this kind of little cog which means we've got to do something so it says hit X so that's X on the PlayStation uh, sorry on the Xbox it's gonna be different on the PlayStation it'll be square I think um, so it says press B to cancel out of a menu or close panels um, but we've got here districts and buildings or units so I'm gonna build a scout so I hit uh, A to open these and under units um, you can see there's this little advisor sort of highlight um, showing what she, what she suggests we build uh, and it also shows the amount of turns so this is going to take four turns. So a scout the advantage of them is they've got three movement over a warrior who's only got two movement so they can move a bit fast so they're good for scouting out the region that's why she's suggesting it and she also saw that village. So we'll go with that. Um, so down the bottom, in the middle, you can see it says A, four turns. Or if we had some money, we could left LB it, uh, which would be L1 on the PlayStation, and that would build that. But we're gonna go with A. And uh, that's then gonna start. Now, the bottom right also shows another thing that we need to do. We've got this little sort of um, bottle. And if we hit X, this is the technology tree. So as you go through civilization, you're free to research new technology. And the more technology you get, the better units you can get, the better sort of farming and stuff you can do there. Um, and you can't, well, you can start over here, but it takes you loads of turns. So it's generally best to start with some of these and that makes things that little bit quicker. 
So you have a little think about what's important to you to start with. So it could be um, you want to start mining to get better resources or pottery or something like that. If you're not sure, on the right hand side there'll be a button. So it's Y on the Xbox B uh, triangle on the PlayStation. Um, so you can see here pottery. It says it allows harvesting of bonus resources improved by farms, blah, blah, blah. It tells you loads of information about it. X goes back um, into the civilization, uh, civilopedia rather, um, and we go all through these. So let's say we want to do mining. And when we're happy with that, it says choose research. So we'll just go with that. Uh, so if you want to see what that does, it allows chopping of woods, harvesting of copper. Cool. So when we've done that, down the bottom right, we've now got this exclamation mark. If we hit X saying something's happened uh we've got this um warrior that we've got to move so we'll say okay we'll we'll, we'll explore this way and we'll explore this way so we're just moving our little dude around at the minute it's nothing for them to do so we'll press x again and it's saying what do you want to do now but i can't really move i can move this way up a hill takes more movement time so we'll go this way so i'm moving that bar with my left stick so it's saying this is the only dude I've got to do something Essence with at the minute. Like scouts are unique in that they can... Yep, I know that. Um, but I'm just showing you that this, you know, they can be quite useful. Uh, so the scout has now been built. So if I hit X, you can see that our city um, has got these things to do. And what she's suggesting now is to build a monument. So the monument is useful if you're going to start chasing down the culture route uh, of a victory. It's one of the things that will help with that. Um, so you could debate whether you want to do that or whether you want to start building some military units. That's entirely up to you. Let's say we're going to go for that. Remember, I turned off culture, but this just shows you that if you were going for a culture victory, things like this will help you achieve that. So we'll say, OK, lady, we'll do that. So here's our scout. And you can see that they've got a bit of a longer movement range than the warrior. Um, so I'm using my left stick to move them and that's the little village she was telling me about before so villages like this will help you with either gold or units or stuff like that so they're worth going to find and explore so we'll send our scout off this area and you can see they shared a hidden technical secret so knowledge of writing is advanced considerably so that's quite useful so we'll say cool continue so here's my warrior they've come to the um, sort of see here so we'll move them down this way and see what's this our way city continues to prosper already brilliant though our population grows there is little room for our newer citizens we should find a way to add more housing to this city so if you want to find out about anything she talks about you can hit tell me more and it says housing is a representation of the rep maximum amount of citizens you can have in each city the basic source of housing is a water source. Many buildings grant housing. After researching pottery, every city is able to build a granary which adds two housing, and later on they can build sewers which also adds two housing. So it's basically saying, you know, add these things and that helps your population grow. So I could, I'll jump out of that, but my point is you can, you know, have a little look at these and read them to your heart's content. So the, the help system's quite powerful in there. So we've now got our little scout here that we can move. So we'll move them this way. And this way who deserves more credit than the wife of a coal miner so remember she was saying pottery so now we've got the mine this says we can unlock the builder ability to construct mines um, so this increases production but less appeal can be built in hills or valid resources um, if built on luxury or strategic resources the city will gain use of that resource um, so if we say cool we we'll hit b we we'll hit b again and then down the bottom right it shows that we've got this um, research thing again so we hit x to access that open the technology tree and we really should chase pottery because that's going to help our city grow so we'll go with that one choose research so there's no right or wrong way that you have to research stuff in civilization it's, it's just up to you really um you know and, and what your objectives are so we'll hit b to go out here and we will uh, just hit the x button so it'll move to the next unit that we've got available which is our little explorer or our scout and then certain areas like this area here you can't move across so we're gonna go this way and we just keep exploring enacting new policies in our government can be of great benefit our people await your decree 
So you can find out more here, but basically... It is not the, wisdom, but authority that makes a law. Um, the government, after a certain point, you can set to give you certain policies. So this allows you to tailor your civilization government to do certain um, things to help you. So, for example... For example, this one says plus five unit combat strength when fighting barbarians, which in my case is useless because I turned off barbarians. However, we could have double experience for recon units, so we may as well do that as we've not got barbarians. The other thing that we've got, so we'll put that there by hitting A, and then you've got either one production in all cities or one faith and one gold in the uh, capital city. So I'm going to go with one production because I'm not bothered about faith because I turned that off, that's for religion. And then down the bottom it says confirm policy, so I'll hit the menu button. Is our gender set? Yes, it is. So then we'll continue. Um, you can see that even though the map was not that big, it's still taking quite a while to explore it, which is why I suggest you start with a smaller map. Uh, and then the civics tree shows that we've researched code of laws, so we can now uh, look for these different things here. You can also boost the speed of this research if you did something like improve three tiles or discovered a second continent. So it's up to you which one you go with here. And again, you can hit Y to see what they do. So this is just gonna make it something, blah, blah, blah. Whatever, I'm just gonna hit, yeah, choose that one. Um, the civics aren't too important at this stage, particularly not in the beginner's guide. I won't worry about it too much. So down the bottom is this, we've got the little cog. So we hit X um, and we're back in Pella. So it's saying what they suggest now. So our advisor is suggesting a settler, so we're at the point where we're going to expand. So we're going to say, yeah, we're going to build that. So we found our first um, sort of other civilization. So you could say, either sort of poo-poo them or say, it's an honor to meet you. We, we may as well be polite. Um, and then she can say, do you want to visit? And we'll say, yeah. No man ever wetted clay and then left it. As if they So you're probably getting at the swing of things now. Um, we can open the technology. Uh, we can go in and do the next one. So we could do animal husbandry. You remember when we met that other civilization, you can see writing, we can get that bit quicker. And if we look at writing, it'll tell us uh, what we've got here. A bit of history about it. Um, and what it leads to. So you can see, you know, different bits that you want. But I'm just going to do the core one, so we'll choose that one. And then we just continue like this. So we'll keep moving. So that could be, that must be her uh, civilization that we found. So they're just going to beat me to that other city by the looks of things, which is annoying. But I don't think I can beat them. Uh, it doesn't look like it. Frustrating, never mind. Hmm. Okay, so... Yeah, we can just... Uh, welcome her. Um, you could be more defensive if you wanted, but I'm really not bothered because we're on a nice easy one. I don't think it's going to be a big issue. But as I headed into the heart of New Zealand's Fjordland, that same childlike feeling, long lost, a pure, unadulterated awe, came rushing back. I knew the road to Milford Sound was good, but this good? So, oh, through exploration, we have discovered a natural wonder of the world. There is no doubt that it could provide a great benefit to the one who settles the land surrounding it. So again, the advice is helping us out there. We can say, tell me more. And then it says, blah, blah, blah. Uh, unique benefits to the civilization. Some have special effects. So uh, we could find something around here and then that one that would give its benefits to us. So in the turn. <laughs> Pewnam tego. Jam Jadwiga, król Polski. Okay. So we can say with yes or no. This military unit has proven themselves. From the experience they have gained in combat, they are. I am fond of pigs. 
So it's all kicking off now. You can see as we go, you know, lots more stuff is is done. Um, not quite sure why that's saying gain stuff in combat. It doesn't look like it's been promoted at all. I don't know. Um, so we we'll go this way. But basically, as um, units are used in combat, they can get promotions. So we've got another technology. So some of these, as we go through, will improve and we'll get um, additional stuff. So you could go with archery, for example, uh, and that's going to improve. Uh, you can see on the left-hand side, it says unlocks unit archer. So we'll go with that. So as we go through the technology th screen, of course, we're going to get um, access to more advanced units, more advanced uh, buildings and all that sort of stuff. So it takes time, of course, to, to progress like this. Sure. So here's our settler. Um, so they took a little while. So this is where we're at a point where we can expand our city to other areas. Um, but the the area that we're in, <laughs> there's like no sort of uh, natural water by by the lots of things. So the next nearest useful area looks to be here or here. So it just depends where we want to to go off and settle. You can zoom in and have a little look at these other resources and see where it makes sense. So remember we had that natural wonder right the way over there, but that's a long way for our settler to go. And there's one of our uh, rival cities. Um, so they will get more annoyed the more we expand towards them. Um, but likewise, we may want to defend the area so we are a little more protected uh, from them expanding towards our area as well. But this map, if we zoom out, is still a reasonable size. So there's all these different areas. But there's nothing too exciting with um, resources by the looks of things at the minute. But we'll go here. Um, I don't know, that's a little bit close to Pella by, by the looks of things though. Two away. Eh, should be okay. Let's go there. So if you had barbarians on, you have to be careful um, that the, your settler would not get attacked while you're out here. So it's generally a good good idea to send uh, some defense with them but because I've got barbarians off that's less of a problem so you can see she's suggesting we go with a settler again uh, what do we got we've only got two unit size though so I'm gonna go with granary and try and help the city grow we'll come back in here Without exploring craftsmanship. inspiration so you can see now we've got um, a different whoops Sorry, I'm going uh, flicking through them all. 50% towards ancient and classical melee anti-cavalry and range units. So we could use this instead of the one we've got at the minute, the survey. So if we want to use that, we hit A or X on the PlayStation. Uh, and then we switch to that. And then we want to confirm the policies down the bottom. It says menu button for that for me on the Xbox. So I'll go, yeah, and that's done. Uh, and we just keep exploring this, this way. Um, and you can see we've got this here. Um, certain things I can't do because I haven't got any barbarians, so I can't boost this with barbarian outpost. Um, we could go with this one, so we'll just choose this. So now we're at the point where we can build our second city. So it said that, you know it likes this area. Um, we've got a couple of resources around here. We've got cows, we've got tobacco, we've got corn. Um, so it does seem like a good area. So D-pad across to the little build icon down the bottom right finds our second city so there we go and then Pella here we've got um, you know what do we want to build next I thought I'd already said this but maybe I didn't so we oh sorry no this is Alexandropoloi so it's saying build the granary so we'll build the granary oh so she's not happy um, so we could say Apologies, try and keep her happy. Just as our citizens have faith in your leadership, so they are. Uh, so we continue exploring. And you can see the game takes a while, you know, to, to do all of this stuff. And um, we're finding lots of resources, but no more cities by the looks of things. Doesn't look like I can get over that mountain. Not that way, anyway. Or that way. Or that way. So these are examples where you're going to have to explore by sea to access certain areas, but you'd have to build uh, boats and stuff like that. But you can't do that unless you've got a um, 
city that's by the sea. So Pella now has the granary completed, top left. Um, so now it's saying, you know, let's push with another it is settler. It's mountain we conquer, but ourselves. To another, uh, another natural wonder. And we've got a bit of uh, gold from that little area. Here's our scout going this way. We have the opportunity to develop a formal trade route between... The number of faithful has grown, and it is time for us to define our beliefs. Let us choose a pantheon to worship. So if you're not sure about this, again, the advisor can be useful. So it says once you've accumulated enough faith, you'll be founded. To, uh, you'll be prompted to found a pantheon, a precursor to full-blown religions. Amazing. So we can do that. Every nation lives. We've got <laughs> so many things going on here. So you can see down the bottom right, there's lots of, for us to do now. We've got the technology tree needs updating because we've just got archery, so we'll go with writing. <clears throat> the civics tree needs a new one. So I'll just pick off. And then this is the Pantheon Belief, so we can go down here and find whatever one we want. So there's all sorts of stuff here you can see, um, you know, whether you want to use any of these or not. But again, because I'm interested in um, military, I would go with something that gives um, something useful of military here. So maybe this one, God of the Forge. Found this. Uh, done. So we can see that and then we just continue like this um, uh, but we're coming up to half an hour or so and I think that's a good time to finish so what we haven't done is uh, any combat in here because <laughs> there's not really anyone to take on but combat's relatively easy you just uh, use your unit into it and if you want separate videos on that I'll show it um, in a separate one but hopefully this has given you enough on a, a sort of beginner's guide just to get up and running and what some of this stuff does um, anything that you're still vague on let me know and perhaps we'll carry on with a part two thanks so much for watching if you liked it thumbs up please much appreciate any comments welcome and i'll see you again in another video